Today in our Unsolved series, we take a deep dive into DNA. Monday, we talked about cold cases that went unsolved for decades that are now solved thanks to new DNA technology. It's come a long way in recent years, and part of the reason is you. We never thought that the technology was going to come this far. If anyone knows how far DNA technology has come, it's Yvonne Woods. I'm a forensic scientist at the Colorado Bureau of Investigation Crime Lab. I've actually been working cold cases for 29 years. In her nearly three decades in the field, she's seen the advancements firsthand. When DNA first started in the 1980s, you needed about a quarter size sample of DNA. And the tests took approximately a month to complete. Um, right now, we only need about 10 cells and we can turn around in a number of hours. It's taken decades to get here. In the mid 80s, the advent of testing someone's DNA using biological matter like blood, semen and saliva began. In the late 80s, we saw the first person convicted of murder using DNA technology. That happened in the UK. In 1990, CODIS, an acronym for Combined DNA Index System was developed. This is a national database that stores and compares DNA from any crime scene or offender. In the late 90s, new DNA technology called Short Tandem Repeat, or STR, was created, which helps separate multiple people's DNA, let's say from a sexual assault victim and a perpetrator. And then about five years ago, genetic genealogy started playing a big part in solving crimes and cold cases. We've begun work on approximately 50 genealogy cases in the last three years, and we've solved almost half of those um, with this new technology. Well, I handled the first DNA case in Denver in 1989. Mitch Morrissey is a former Denver district attorney. He turned his passion for justice into a second career. I am the chief of operations of United Data Connect. Most of what we do is called uh, investigative genetic genealogy. That's comparing DNA from online databases to find anyone related to a person of interest. Morrissey does this job to help those most vulnerable. About 90% of the crimes we solve with DNA, women are the victims of those crimes. The 10% that are left, it's about 9.5, 9.7 are kids. This is so important because these are violent crimes, rapes and murders that are committed by men against the women and children in our communities. I'm just gonna tell you, it's not a happy job. Not happy or easy, and not for anyone seeking instant gratification. The oldest cold case that I ever worked was just recently solved last year. So, and I had worked on that case for 28 and a half years. It's a deep desire to help and the search for answers that keeps them going. I do believe that we provide the information that families have longed for for years. So we talked about forensic genetic genealogy. When people hear that, they think of 23andMe or Ancestry.com, right? Those are really common. However, law enforcement can't use information from those databases. You have to upload your information from those sites to one of two free databases, GEDmatch or Family Tree. Those can connect you to more relatives, but also help investigators link the DNA to victims or suspects, which help solve more crimes. I find this incredibly fascinating, and I think this is really hopeful for a lot of people who are in the situation that they may be somebody involved in one of these cold cases. I'm curious to know if more people are signing up to have their case kind of be reviewed with this new technology given the fact that we are seeing some of them being cracked. Well, we, you know, we saw a couple years ago how popular these 23andMe and Ancestry things became, right? People wanted to know their family tree. They wanted to know their lineage. And so by signing up on these other websites, you're expanding that even more to find relatives. But more and more people are signing up to put their DNA on there in hopes of connecting to help investigators find, you know, the answers to some of these cold cases. And this isn't just suspects. This can be victims as well. Like, let's say there's a Jane Doe from many years ago that they can't identify. Well, if they have a profile and people start uploading their DNA, they can start closing some of the Jane Does and, you know, that are out there. Absolutely. That is interesting. Well, we're going to have to see how much farther this, uh, further this technology continues to advance and, and how many more cases are solved because I think this is really great. It's just getting better and better, easier and faster, which is great. Well, great reporting. As Thank always. you. Appreciate that.